Hi everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D Print Creator. In this episode, I'm going to start a topic and I hope that a lot of people will follow me in this topic. Uh, the thing is that I want to uh, be able to make my 3D printing experience a safer experience. Uh, I want to do that for myself uh, because I don't want to have my house burned down. But I also want this to be open source so everyone can enjoy this safer 3D printing uh, environment. And uh, the way I want to do this is I want to, uh, to design something that makes 3D printing really a lot safer. And uh, I want to make it so that uh, you can adapt it to every printer. And I also want it to be yeah, pretty cheap. Uh, and therefore I have some ideas and uh, well it looks like fun to me to spread the word with you uh, to show you what my ideas are and to hear from you guys what you think uh, should be added or should be changed or uh, that kind of things and then maybe we can together build something that really makes 3D printing safe and I want this to be completely open source so I want everyone to be able to, yeah, to, to make this for yourself. Well, the idea is as follows. Uh, and I'm going to my laptop here. Oh, and I lost the connection with my laptop. I don't know why. There it is. So, uh, here's the connection with my laptop. And, uh, well, it's all about safer 3D printing. So that's what I wrote down here. And safer 3D printing comes down to uh, minimizing all the dangers that there are. And there are a few dangers, uh, some severe, uh, some less severe. Uh, but there are some things we have to, yeah, we have to take in account. Uh, one of the things is the part coming loose. That's what's over here. Uh, if a part comes loose, then you will have a bunch of spaghetti uh, on your print bed because uh, all your filament extrudes out uh, yeah, all the way until the, the, the print is done. Uh, but in a worst case you will have a nozzle clog because there is a hard bunch of plastic under your nozzle and uh, sometimes uh, you can get it loose from the nozzle, sometimes you can't and then well uh, basically uh, you're screwed because uh, you have to change your nozzle or even worse you have to change your hot end. Uh, these things can happen. They don't happen very often, but they can happen. And how nice would it be if we would have some kind of sensor that senses that this is going to happen and then can take action for you. Something we have to think about. Another problem is overheating. So uh, overheating can, uh, can have a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is that the host is sending the wrong commands. Uh, for example, you have set in Simplified 3D a temperature of 380 degrees Celsius. And uh, you're sending this out to your printer. And if your firmware isn't uh, locking you out from, from using too high temperatures, then there is really no problem for the firmware to, yeah, to, to heat up your nozzle to this high temperature. So uh, the chances are that your firmware is blocked and that it won't do anything wrong. Uh, but chances are that if you if you made your printer yourself and if you uh, have written your own custom firmware, uh, then you can have made a mistake and then overheating can happen just because of the wrong commands from the host. So this is something that can happen really a bit worse because you can't control this is a loose thermistor. Uh, what can happen is that your thermistor comes loose from your uh, heater block and if this happens then your printer thinks that uh, your, your thermistor is colder than it should be uh, because the thermistor is sending a value that is cold and then your printer starts heating your nozzle and uh, it will continue heating your nozzle because the thermistor won't get warm because it's not inside of that alum aluminum block anymore. 
this is something that really happened to me. Uh, I noticed uh, because I was watching the print. Uh, but this can really be a potential danger. So uh, a loose thermistor is really something that can occur and uh, that can be a potential fire danger. And we have to find a way to fight this. Another thing is a short circuit. Uh, this is very rare, but it can happen. Uh, you can have for some reason a short circuit. Uh, sometimes this happens in connectors, for example. And uh, then uh, sparks can, can go everywhere and sparks can ignite your uh, CPU board. And well, they can make a fire. So what can we do about this? Well, overheating comes down to uh, measuring temperature. So if we are able to measure the temperature uh, there where we need to measure it, then we are able to, uh, for example, uh, disconnect the machine from, from the power outlet uh, when a temperature gets too high. So for example, if you have a an, uh, an hot end uh, that can heat up to, for example, 300 degrees, it's an E3D V6, let's take that example, uh, then it can be heated up to 300 degrees Celsius. Then uh, you can set a value in, in some machine that we are going to build, uh, that if this 300 degrees Celsius will be exceeded, that then the power will be cut and then the machine will turn off. So this is something we can make. Also, uh, when, uh, when your CPU gets too hot or when fire uh, really is, is going to be uh, yeah, taking place, then we also want to turn the machine off. We want to kill the power line. So uh, we can measure the temperature at several places and then uh, look what happens and set values that if this value is exceeded then the power will be turned off. And this can be done for example with a very simple and very cheap Arduino. Uh, my idea is to have a, a very basic thermistor. I have one here and I hope you can see. This is a very basic thermistor and uh, well you can hook it up to for example, an Arduino, I have it here and it shows me the temperature reading. Uh, but the thing is that uh, if you measure the temperature, then you can set decisions uh, when the temperature gets too hot or too cold. You can also set the decision for that. Because if your nozzle is cooling down, then obviously the print is, is done. Uh, and then you can set for example a timer uh, that after 10 minutes of cooling from the nozzle uh, the, so that the, the cooler on the nozzle is still being powered uh, but after 10 minutes your printer can be turned off. So with only a temperature sensor we can do a lot. Then we have another problem uh, and the other problem that is CPU blockage. Uh, this happened to me a few times uh, if you follow me on Twitter then you have seen that I've uh, had this problem uh, very often with the Fabricator Mini version 2. Uh, for some reason all of the sudden the print stops and well there is no connection possible anymore from the host. Uh, whatever host I use it doesn't matter it happens in the Fabricator. And then uh, well nothing happens anymore. I can send g-code commands to the printer but it won't react. The problem is that also the nozzle is staying hot. The print bed isn't moving anymore so the nozzle is staying hot on the plastic. And uh, well this can be a potential danger of course uh, which can cause fire. The heaters stay on and the bed doesn't move. Result fire. So what we have to do is we have to check for movement. And there are several ways to check for movement. Uh, a very simple way is uh, a shock sensor uh, that, uh, well, th that makes contact uh, every now and then when there is movement and that stops uh, making contact when, uh, yeah, when, when there is no movement anymore. 
So I think a combination of sensors, temperature sensor, a movement sensor, uh, a combination of sensors can make it easy for us to, to know what is going on. Then when we have these sensors, uh, we can do something with that data. Uh, we can use the data to, uh, for example, turn the printer off, to set an alarm. Uh, if you have home automation, uh, then you can set uh, things in your home automation if you want to. So what we really want to do is uh, we want to make sure that we can give commands if a certain trigger is, is, is applied. So the trigger can be a too hot temperature or a too cold temperature. The trigger can be there is no movement anymore. Uh, and then we have to do something when that happens. And well, this is basically the idea that I have uh, to build. I want to make it with an Arduino, uh, a very cheap one, the Arduino uh, Micro for example, or the Mini. Because uh, those are just a few dollars and I think everyone can, can buy them. Uh, also, I want to make this a very easy to, to make project, even if you don't have any understanding of electronics. Uh, I want to explain every step I do, I want to explain the programming I do, uh, all the electronics I build, but I want everyone to be able to make this because we all want safer 3D printing. So if you like this idea, if you like to, to help out with this idea, uh, leave your comments in the description down below. Uh, I'm going to make a series of this, so uh, well, <laughs> this will be a, a video that's repeating itself. And I hope that you join, uh, I hope that you share this video to everyone you know with a 3D printer. Uh, yeah, because we all want this community to be safe. So that's basically it. Uh, please leave your comments in the messages down below and uh, let us start creating something that is, yeah, that's really nice and everyone with a 3D printer should have. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm almost having 1800 viewers now uh, which are subscribed. Uh, if you subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell button because then you will be notified every time uh, I make a new video. And also, uh, you can help this channel out by giving a one-time donation or by bec becoming a Patreon. And every information uh, about that can be found in the link in the description down below. So, this is it. I hope to see you very, very soon uh, after, uh, well, all your... Uh, your ideas will be spread out in this comment section down below. Bye bye!